I have just the faintest sensation, a tingly sensation in my back, that this idea might have some clout. Hey guys, Masako X here. Now episode 92 and 93 of Dragon Ball Super have set the internet ablaze with conspiracies, theory, controversy about the acquisition of the Super Saiyan power by the Saiyans of Universe 6. Back in the Universe 6 arc, we saw the potential of the Saiyans when Kaba first reached the Super Saiyan form, and just now, a couple of weeks ago, we saw that other Saiyans can tap into it too, thanks to Khalifla and Kale in the Universe Survival arc or pretty much, the community's new waifus. Both times were indeed unexpected, and both times were met with mixed results. Across the internet, cries of foul were heard. These Saiyans can do it after some childish name calling. Go on, and Goku had to go through emotional trauma to do that. That's not fair. Hacks, I call hacks. How dare these imposters use up such an iconic transformation from my childhood? Hashtag not my Saiyan! I don't remember this much furore when Goten and Trunks could go Super Saiyan when there were 7 and 8 respectively. I mean, there might have been, I would just might not have been aware of it. We just kind of went along with it. Either that or there wasn't as much of an outrage. For those of you watching that might be perplexed as to why there is so much controversy and anger about Khalifa and Kale gaining the Super Saiyan transformation, it's all to do with the way it was delivered. It's all about that dialogue concerning a tingly sensation in your back and the yellow particles and therefore actually explaining why the Super Saiyan transformation works the way it does. It was visualizing it and we kind of liked the mystery from what it was before and to now actually see it before our eyes, albeit with slightly different Saiyans, was a bit, like, anticlimactic. You know, powering up through anger and rage and fury, it's now been demeaned to yellow fizzing candy. I must admit, it could have been handled a little bit better, but I do feel that the power is justifiable. We actually need to take a step back and remember something. The Saiyans of Universe 6 are not the same exact copies of the Saiyans of Universe 7. They are different. There are things that we need to take into account before we can just slap the same label on a different product. First off, the fact that these Saiyans didn't get themselves destroyed by thanks to their own benevolent nature in this universe is something to take note of. In fact, they never even had to leave their original homeworld, Planet Sadler or Sadal, depending on what you watch. The Saiyans of Universe 6 are still there, and they have thrived because they are much more philanthropic, much more well-meaning, and just good. They're not evil tyrants or, you know, power-hungry pillagers. They were a freedom force that were able to keep evil at bay and know who to trust. Because of that, Saiyans of Universe 6 are well-respected, and they are really seen as heroes rather than just, you know, scummy mercenaries. In my History of the Saiyans video, I talked about Saiyan history prior to the time that we actually saw them in the series. It is my theory, based on the evidence from Daizenshu 7's timeline about Dragon Ball history before the series, it actually could be said that Saiyans were part of another tribe of humanoids on planet Sadler. Like, they were some kind of breakaway faction. And what separated the Saiyans and made them into the superior race on planet Sadler, and then they moved to planet Plant, was the whole flashpoint of the legendary Super Saiyan in Age 238. That struck a chord in that little civil war there must have been, and then turned the tide in the Saiyan favour. The other species, they just withered and died at the foot of the legendary Super Saiyan. 800 years later, and the Saiyans found themselves off planet Sadler, and then off to planet Plant, apparently due to some kind of rocket ship, which is as of yet unexplained. So supposing that that civil war on Sadler, or the legendary Super Saiyan Flashpoint Cataclysm, never happened. The Saiyans and other humanoid tribes on Sadler would have crossbred, and thanks to the power of Saiyan genetics, which were quite potent, their evolution would have been extraordinarily rapid, and would have resulted in the loss of the iconic Saiyan tail that is common in Universe 7. Vegeta knows himself that the tail is a relic of their former generations, and he and Nappa were able to teach themselves not to fall foul of one of its greatest weaknesses. You know, if you pull it, you then can paralyze a Saiyan. So it might be safe to say that Saiyan evolution in Universe 6 is hundreds of years further on than Universe 7 Saiyan's evolution. You're not dealing with the average Saiyan warrior anymore. Literally. Genetics have looked down upon Universe 6 Saiyans and blessed them with power that no one can possibly imagine. 
That and they don't need to worry about tails anymore. However, let's take another step back and look at a very ingrained oddity within the fandom. How come Goten and Trunks can go Super Saiyan so easily? Being so young and with so little effort? Well, it's all down to the G word, genetics. So let's be honest, I am not a biologist or a geneticist, but I do know someone who is. My partner Philly is a master's in it, from Durham and Cambridge no less, as well as a qualified science teacher. So the majority of what will follow right now will be coming from her. So let's get ourselves in to the right ambience and the right attire. Now, settle down class. Now before we get into the nitty gritty of this idea, let's get some assumptions out of the way. First off, Saiyans and humans are the same species, or at least the same subspecies. The definition of a species is a type of being that can actually produce viable offspring, whereas a hybrid is something that cannot. So since Gohan's a half Saiyan and he was able to produce Pan, he is quite rightly fertile and not a hybrid. Secondly, that there is just a single Saiyan gene within the genetic makeup, and that this gene interacts with other genes. Again, saves us a major headache. Thirdly, this kind of lesson is really aimed at the age range of 14 to 16, so this is something that you could learn at GCSE level or high school. This is not the opinion of an expert geneticist. There are far more complex interactions that can happen within your human genome, but we're not going to be covering those today. We're just going to go over the basics. We all inherit our genetics from our parents, half from our mother, half from our father. For each gene, you get two copies, one from your mother and one from your father. These are called alleles. Alleles are different versions of the same genes. For example, you could have brown alleles or blue alleles to denote eye color. Dominant alleles are expressed over any other alleles which are recessive or not dominant. A classic example of this that you might have seen in biology textbooks is a brown allele is much more dominant than a blue allele. So if you have a parent that is brown eyed and one who is blue eyed, your children are more likely to be brown eyed. You might still carry a blue allele within your genetic makeup, but it won't be actually expressed as being you. So now let's have a go at some Super Saiyan science. As it's appeared in published material, both visually and on paper, Saiyans are able to pass on their characteristics to their offspring, as we see with Gohan, Goten, Trunks, etc. The assumption being is that the Saiyan gene must be dominant because we can see it, while the human gene or normal type is recessive. It is convention in genetic crosses or diagrams like the Punnett square that we represent the alleles with a single letter. For the dominant we'll use a capital letter, so say for the Saiyan phenotype we'll use a capital S, and for the normal type or the human gene we'll use a small s. So let's take a look at Goku and Chi Chi's genetic cross or Punnett square. As we know, Goku is a purebred Saiyan. All of their offspring would be SS, with the Saiyan gene being dominant. They would all therefore have the Saiyan gene, which is present in Gohan and Goten, and therefore could potentially be unlocked to Super Saiyan. They and any potential offspring could become Super Saiyan. So would all of Gohan's children become Saiyans? So remember that Goku and Chi Chi's offspring would all be SS? Gohan carries one Saiyan allele, and one normal allele. So let's take a look at Gohan and Videl's genetic cross. So there is a 50-50 chance that we might actually see a Saiyan child, SS, or we might just see a completely human child, the two small S's. So what if two half Saiyans like Gohan were to breed, so they had one dominant S and one recessive S? What is the likelihood of their children being a Saiyan or not? There is a one in two chance that the offspring would be just like Gohan, so dominant S, recessive S a 1 in 4 chance that it would just be a pure-blooded human, and a 1 in 4 chance that we might actually see a pure-bred Saiyan. So overall, there is a 3 in 4 chance that the child would be born with Saiyan characteristics. You just need to find a lot of half Saiyans and hope that the odds are in your favour. So quite clearly, there was a 50-50 chance that Pan might have been born just as a regular human, but as evident in Super, we saw her express her Saiyan traits quite effectively and quite adorably. All thanks to the Saiyan gene that she inherited from her father Gohan. The fact that she has the same genetic makeup as Gohan, this could be applied for every single descendant of Pan. Goku Jr. in GT had the exact same odds of inheriting the Saiyan gene as Pan did. It doesn't get diluted over time. It's the same. It's just good fortune that in every generation that's passed, you still get the Saiyan genes. So Goku Jr. becoming a Super Saiyan in GT at the end of it is completely possible. 
Science! So, okay, Masako, you've proven that Goten, Trunks, and Gohan have the Saiyan gene and can pass it on to their children just as effectively, but why can they go Super Saiyan so easily? Over on Anime Science 101, Chris Mayhag wrote an article about Super Saiyan genetics which blew my mind. It all comes down to epigenetics. We're not talking about altering genes here, you know, gene therapy. We're just basically switching up what you already have in your DNA. Mayhag explains this better than I can. Darwin's theory of evolution stated that organisms would slowly change over time, adapting to their environment. But if offspring inherit the traits of their parents, then how would the child's survival be any better or worse than its parent? The answer to that is that each time an organism reproduces, it first creates a copy of its DNA that it contributes to the resulting offspring. DNA is rather good at copying itself, but it's not perfect, making one mistake in every one billion base pairs of letters copied. Considering that the human genetic map is 3 billion base pairs, that's 3 mistakes every time it copies itself. These mistakes can cause a particular trait to improve, get worse, or not change at all. So where does this come into the Super Saiyan genetics debate then? Mayhag turns to something called hybridization or hybrid vigor to explain this. The extreme events that causes an individual to become a Super Saiyan and the stress that being a Super Saiyan puts on the individual's body can cause changes to how various genes are regulated. Given the amount of time it takes for the first transformation to complete, genes that were previously dormant need to be turned on, and other genes turned off. Having activated the mode, once the control of the genes regulating the Super Saiyan state are altered, it allows for easier and easier access to the Super Mode. These changes in gene regulation can be passed down to their children, as previously stated. This would explain how Goten and Trunks can achieve the Super Saiyan form without the strain and trauma that their parents did, or even their siblings because of Gohan. Because when Gohan was born, Goku didn't know about Super Saiyan, so that particular part of Goku's genetic makeup hadn't been turned on yet. This is all off the back of an evolutionary theory by Lamarck called the theory of inheritance through acquired characteristics. Although this theory has been long since superseded by Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection, some elements of Lamarck's theory might be present as to how Saiyans evolve. It might be able to explain how Saiyan offspring can then therefore gain the Super Saiyan transformation much more easily than their parents can if the parents have indeed become Super Saiyans themselves. Now going back to Universe 6, this might also explain why those Saiyans can achieve the Super Saiyan form so easily. In fact, even more easily than Goten and Trunks. More stability and peace within a society equals to much greater breeding. Thusly, there are more generations of Saiyan DNA to actually spread and strengthen, adapt and evolve. We saw how quickly Saiyans evolved in Universe 7 over 20 years. They went from just living in a cave to having a fully fledged monarchy. Imagine hundreds of years of evolution in peacetime with stability integrity, it would be monumentally greater than ours. It meant that the time was right for the Saiyans to actually get the Super Saiyan ability, they just didn't know how to do it. Thanks to Vegeta though, they do now. So for those of you concerned that Dragon Ball Super might be trivializing the Super Saiyan transformation, don't worry, they're not. It's just that Saiyan evolution is so fast and Universe 6 Saiyans are so much different it might mean that Super Saiyan transformations are a lot different depending on the circumstances that Saiyans evolve and breed in. The Saiyan abilities become much more accessible with every passing generation. So long as humans with the Saiyan gene inside of them keep on breeding, then the Saiyan race will ultimately never die out. If there was a child born with only the small S's and therefore just being a normal type of human, that's the time when the Saiyan race will eventually die out. So don't worry, there's no pressure there. Just keep on having a bit of nookie. So what do you guys think? Did you like this? Did you find it interesting? Has this allayed your fears about the Super Saiyan bargain sale? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later.